Hello guys, welcome to Jesus Loves You channel where we give you latest news all around the world. Igbos are not slaves. Wale Sheikha tells Bawi, you see all these bad people we call our leader. It's all the threats they have laid on the people. People will be saying I didn't vote them as leaders today. Hmm. Well, before I start with the news, if you are just watching us for the first time without subscribing, please click on the subscribe button down below. In that way, that will notify you whenever we drop a new video. And I pray as we keep supporting our channel, God will keep sending people to support you. Amen. Now, this is a bit. Nobu Laureate Wale Shoinka has softened his initial stance against secessionists in the country, saying that both Biafran and Yoruba nation agitators are not slaves and have the right to call for secession. In a statement, the professor berated the use of force against the agitators, saying it is the responsibility of the leadership to persuade them by looking at the issues raised by the group and address them. It is time to think outside the box that many in so doing find no landing place except the solution. It's not a crime, it's not peculiar to any people and is embedded in the ongoing history of many and not only on this continent. It is their natural right as free citizens, not slaves of habit and indoctrination, where the solution rides high, sentiment tumbles outwards, and the only question becomes what can be salvaged. Thus remain the responsibility of leadership to persuade them through both discourse and remedial action that there are no other option. Attempted bullying is not a language of discourse, not the facile plot of tying all bears with the same feather. While commenting on President Muhammad Bahari's statement about the civil war, Shoyinka said, while he had no brief for those killing and destroying government properties, the president's statement to deal with them in the language they understand was wrong. I hold no brief for those who resort to burning down police stations, slaughter their occupants simply for the crime of aiming a measly monthly pythons, touch electoral offices, assassinate politicians in calculated effort to set sections of the country against others in the promotion of their own political goals. These are largely psychopaths and or criminal lords, soulmates of Boko Haram, Iswab, Daesh and company, not to be confused with genuine liberators all over the world throughout history. Elections are denounced, boycotted and generally delegitimized without recourse to wanting butchery. When, however, a head of state threatens to shock civilian dissidents to deal with them in the language they understand, and in a context that conveniently brackets opposition to governance with any blood-testing elements of the state, we have to call attention of the president's language of such a national leader. Other even more provocative, nation disintegrative circumstances what a pity and what a tragic settings to discover that this language was accessible all the time to President Muhammad Buhari, where and when it truly really mattered, when it would have been not only appropriate but deserved and mandatory. When Benue was first massively brought under siege with the massacre of innocent citizens, the destruction of farms, mass displacement followed by alien occupation, Buhari's language, both as utterance and that what is known as body language was of totally different temper. It was diffident, conciliatory, even apologetic. After much internal pressure, even eventually visited the scene of slaughter. Its language learned to live peacefully with your neighbors. The expected language rationally and legitimately applied to the aggressors was exactly what we now hear. I shall shock you. I shall deal with you in the language you understand, he said. All right, guys, um, that's it for the news. Now, let me share my opinion with you. Wale Shoyinka has said it all well. Although his grammar was too much, I had to kick it one after the other. This is somebody that has full support for the people over agitating for their freedom, their independence. This genocidal statement um, that Buhari made against the people, the Igbos agitating for their freedom, it has led to civil war between the government and the people. And the people, which are the, who are the Igbos, have the right for their freedom. These people have the right for their independence, their democracy. And the government no, no get any right to force the people against their wish. Buhari said that banned people from using Twitter. This same Buhari and his administration are still violating the law. They are still using it. They caught people everywhere to access the Twitter and yet they are still using it. When all these plans is to, was to shut down the people from agitating their freedom, 
this our government safe and i'm sure that they are doing all these things to please themselves even the minister of justice gave a law over people that once they use the twitter they, they have violated the hood and they will face the consequences it's very funny when the government will even go in search of people's fault to stop them from using this twitter just look at the way these people are just deceiving themselves they are deceiving themselves in many ways and yet all these threats keeps happening all these severe attacks keeps happening in the southeast the southwest and every part of the country but you know that this government at once meet um, the indigenous leader the leader of indigenous people of the afan mazinam de Kalu, over any of this agitation but in Kalu refuses that is why the government are treating the people as slaves not only the evils the government has started the whole thing, even apart from this genocidal statement made by Buhari. Instead of facing other insecurities prevailing the country, they are busy making threats and warnings to, to more innocent people. Just look at the way some villagers were attacked recently by the Fulani X-Men a few days ago in the southwest, or your state precisely, killing about um, 10 people. But these attacks keep coming against the, with these people that, that are agitating for their freedom. I don't talk about many times, say we get terrorists for this government. This is the reason because these several uh, attacks from the Fulani X-Men keeps happening every day. Will many people have to die before this government can these people their freedom? We all know that uh, all these uh, politicians, they are not even in support of the agitators because of their political power. This is the reason why these agitators have been betrayed many times by them. The increase of these political powers from the government is becoming unbearable. Yes, we know that they are in power and they make decisions, but never to, to make people be their slaves over claiming their rights. Even these bad leaders know that people now find it easy to attack them through the social media. He bringing out their hidden secrets, but this bad government main target are the Hebrews. But because they have a very strong um, leader, a faithful leader, Mazinam de Kalu, a man that has vowed to die for his people and the restoration of Biafra nation. This is why you see today that no matter how bad the government has talked about Inam de Kalu or the Eastern Security Network or the IPOB, the Ubos will never believe any allegations against them because this Eastern Security Network are still the one protecting the lives and properties of the people, most especially in the Southeast. Despite the several allegations on these people, they are still staying strong. These people are not ready to surrender. They are not ready to lose faith in the Biafra restoration. Likewise, the Yorubas of the Dua Republic has their own freedom fighter, Sunday Ugohu, who has been supporting the people in the Southwest, fighting over several attacks, attacks from the Fulani X-Men, and also agitating for their Yoruba nation. Alright guys, um, that's it for the news. I want to thank you all for your support on this channel. It's not taken for granted. And please, don't forget to share your thoughts on the comment section below. After watching, please, don't forget to subscribe, like and share. See you next time till I come your way. Bye, bye, bye.